guys and welcome back to rob's arcade i am your host as always that scum rebel rob french here hanging out with you bringing you guys yet another stellar episode of rob's arcade as we continue to celebrate may the 4th may the 4th be with you guys Today we are going to be hanging out and discussing some of the really cool merch that my wife and I picked up on our last trip to Disney World. Now, typically we go to Disney World for her birthday. This year we decided to go to Disney World for my birthday and I picked up some really cool stuff including this helmet that I'm wearing as well as some other things I'm going to get to here in a moment. But I do want to talk about this helmet really quick because this helmet means quite a bit as you guys know i also do a lot of um, video game videos uh, on my youtube channel under the handle <clears throat> excuse me handle red five french and that originated from luke skywalker we all know his handle is red five and i kind of took that and adopted it with my middle name now when I saw this helmet, this was something I had to get. Just the look, the style, the feel. It, it's the helmet he wore while taking down the original Death Star, Luke Skywalker's helmet. And when I put it on, it just it feels right. It feels good. It's got some really nice like ear protection muffs in here. It's really like, there we go. Just really, oh, there we go. Nice and cover up your ears. Got this cool visor that pulls down got it flipped up right now and this really cool earpiece now while i'm hanging out in our resort room of course i'm playing with all our new merch playing with all our new toys and i look and i find there's actually a little switch inside and i'm like what what does the switch do and i'm like oh my wait a minute there's a button on the inside and this thing red five standing by actually talks to you. It's got a bunch of different phrases. Right here, buddy. I'm in the resort room, just freaking out. My wife is asleep. I'm trying not to wake her up. But I'm literally running back and forth. I'm like, what? Really cool. Like, I can't remember what we paid for this thing, but it was like it was worth it just to have the helmet. And then when I found out it has all these really cool little features, it just made it all the better. There we go. So there's there's the track of all the all the voices. Now, while we were at Hollywood Studios, it got really chilly because, like I said, typically we go for my wife's birthday, but this year we went for my birthday in January. And it got a little bit cooler than I think we both expected. So we had to pick up really cool Star Wars jackets. Now, kind of got the whole look going on right now with the whole Rebel look. But as you pull this open, let me go ahead. It's very reminiscent, put a little extra patch on here, of like the um, Star Wars Resistance and part of the whole new like you know rebel resistance they have going on now and it's just one of my favorite pieces really cool it's really warm actually and it did come in handy my wife got a nice uh green rebel not rebel i guess rebel resistance jacket as well and some more patches and not only did they come in handy like i said kind of keep us warm but it's one of my favorite pieces and star wars the resistance animated series kind of carries the same look, which is that traditional, you know, uh, um, uh, camouflage and just kind of like put together vests and, and that layered look. And it's just one of my favorite, favorite pieces. And, you know, every time I watch the show, I love to put this on and just kind of like really kind of immerse myself in that whole feeling. 
Um, now I'm going to get to the main event and one of my favorite things that I picked up while I was at Disney's uh, Hollywood Studios. And that was, of course, my little buddy R4. Now, of course, this is the R4 that I'm talking about. I put together my very own build a droid at the Droid Depot. Now, I didn't record any of this, and once me and my wife move to Florida, I'm pretty sure we will do another one, and we will record it and kind of walk you guys through the whole experience. But I have to tell you, putting together this little droid was one of the most fun things I've ever done in my life. I was really happy that not only did I get to put together the droid, but I also got to get the really cool backpack. And as you can see, I've already kind of customized it myself. Got a little tool pack in there, you know, just in case. And before we get to showing you what I've done with my droid, because I have done some customizing to my R4, uh, I want to take a second and kind of show you what he looks like or looked like before I started tinkering with this guy and, you know, giving him a little bit of a customized makeover. So let's go ahead and take a look at what my little friend used to look like before I got a hold of a paint kit. And then I'll come back and hang out and show you what this guy looks like. Well, there he is. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he such a beautiful little guy there? Such a fun, fun, you know, I don't want to say this. Such a fun toy, okay? Now, there are some people who might get upset and say, no, 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 no. He's more than a toy. But he did actually win. The the, the, the Build-A-Droid did actually win a uh, title in the, uh, I think it was like the, the 2020 uh, toy awards so I mean technically this guy is a toy it comes with like a little remote control and I'm sorry as much as you want to get down to the basic principles of it this looks like the remote control of a very cool toy now there are some people out there who put these droids together who kind of look at them more as like pets or even as kind of like children they're kind of like self-proclaimed droid parents proud parents of a droid and I'm totally down with that. And I've, you know, to each his own. But for me, putting together this droid and having this droid experience was more about giving myself a companion in space that actually serves a purpose and has a job. And the reason I'm telling you all this is because I want you to kind of see the narrative and the path that I'm taking in kind of customizing my droid now. Some people, like I said, kind of act like it's their child, their baby. They paint it after their favorite sports figure. And there are some really cool designs out there from different TV shows, different characters in Disney itself, where people really adopt a very cool individual personality for each droid. And for me and myself, when I thought about it, I don't think I would be lighting up the universe, even in Star Wars. I mean, as much as I like to think like, oh, I'd be out there fighting the empire taking on the you know the dark side i don't really think i i did a video not too long ago uh where i was at bush gardens and <laughs> i made reference to the fact that as much as i like to be on a spaceship i could barely handle roller coasters sometimes and as much as i love them and i do enjoy them they freak me out and heights you know they scare the heck out of me and so the idea sometimes of like this, this grandeur and these ideas that I have of like going out there and saving the universe, I don't know if I would actually have it in me. And so I think in the Star Wars universe, I'd probably just wind up in some like pod racer scrapyard or some, you know, uh, starship 
uh, used parts store, just selling what I could to make ends meet just so I can get through the next week in this crazy intergalactic, you know, struggle that we're all going through. And while doing so, I would basically just use like bits and pieces and parts from other things to kind of fix my droid. If a panel broke or a little thing here snapped, I would just look around and say, what can I use to kind of fix this droid? Because I don't think in the Star Wars universe, I'd have enough credits to really fix my droid up and make him look all pretty and nice. Now we kind of see that in the beginning of Star Wars in the original movie, C-3PO has that silver leg and you know, R2-D2 is kind of beat up and kind of smudgy and rusty. And it kind of gives the idea that like space isn't necessarily like this clean place that Star Trek and some of these other like franchises tend to kind of like, you know, give that idea that it's space and it's clean and it's sterile. Well, actually, you know, even in the Empire, a lot of their ships are really clean. So I kind of feel like maybe an Imperial droid would be like really sharp and clean and glossy. But in the, in the real in the real world, they get gritty, they get dirty, they get rusty. And that's kind of where I was going with my droid. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the customization that I have done with my little buddy here that I have named R4D1 because I did build him on my 41st birthday. Now, as you can see, this is a droid that works very 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 hard now all of his weathering and all of his paint and all of his detailing is done with a variety of techniques and just some kind of stuff i just played with a lot of different materials that i've used and a lot of different colors here we go this whole back panel as you can see probably came from a whole nother droid little little metal uh, scraping in there. This right here is actually a Lego stud. I figured why not just add like a little bit of color. And then these are Lego studs. Uh, let's see, there's one. Where did I, put? I put one right over here as well, just to make it look, you know, a little, a little different on that side. Uh, the top, as you can see, is very, is it, it, the, the top, gives the idea that he's probably been through some kind of battle, some kind of fight. He's got some definite scoring right there. But then as we look around here, we can definitely see that, you know, he's out there getting dirty, doing his job every day. And I've also done some really cool things with not only just paint, but with, you can pull these little panels off here, the uh, metallic Sharpie markers as well I did both sides over here and you can kind of take a look there it's very cool and i think that's the best part about these droids is like i said you can kind of just do whatever you know you you you, you like whatever you feel is fun like i said just kind of add some like some, some more sharpie lines in here kind of give that like scraped metal look then for some of this like stained oil it's basically just wood stain, just dabbed with a with a napkin. Added some actual um, this green mildew look is done with like some highlighter mixed with the stain and just kind of blending it all together. Again, we kind of open these up and got some more sharpie work done here on the inside, just to kind of make it look a little bit more alive. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and um, <clears throat> excuse me. Again, some more some more sharpie work there. Now these panels kind of flew open, so I actually added a little super glue to the top of the nubs, just a little dab, and a little little wiring in there. There we go. Mm -hmm. And just all kind of makes it all you know look a little bit more alive. Go ahead and clip this side open here. Like I said, this just kind of keeps, whenever he was rolling around, his little panels were just like popping right open. So I just kind of, like I said, put a little, little super glue just on the top, just so it fits nice and neat. And then in there we have the little personality chip, as well as another little Lego stud, just to give a little, little bit of life there. A little customization there on the feet. 
And uh, for the back part panel here, I actually used uh, two different materials. The first part, I wanted to go with a little texture. I don't know if the camera really picked that up there, but it's got some texture there. Almost like, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen like electrical boxes, kind of get like that warding and that pimpling look. So I picked up some of this stone texture, which I've actually used before. Let me grab this guy right here real quick uh, for this little prop head foam guy. But I got the stone version, as you can see. Kind of creepy. And uh, I picked this up because, I don't know, I might do like a sand, like a little light sand on the bottom here just to kind of, again, give it a look that it's been rolling around out in the dirt just a little bit. But I sprayed a little bit of that on the uh, back panel just to give it some texture and then just got a roller brush and went over it with this guy here. And then again, all this kind of like mildew algae is just stain and highlighter blended together. It's dried nice. It doesn't come off. I don't think so. No, no, it's good. Um, and then again, like I said, just a lot of Sharpie work. Uh, oh, some airbrushing, some coloring in here as well. Got the same effect going on here on the other side. Let's go ahead and click this guy over and I'll show you here. Let's go ahead and slide this panel down. And you can also see some metallic work here in the grooves. But again, just, you know, give it a little bit of life. This was all red plastic before, just like this red you see here. So there we go. And I click that guy in. Um, and then uh, today I actually, now I have these, uh, let me put him down for a second here and show you these uh, Sharpies that I use. Now they're just like the metallic, you know, basic Sharpies that you find in the Sharpie pack. But they've just recently, excuse me, come out with these here, which are like these colored Sharpie pens. And I decided to give his underdome a little bit of a makeover as well today. Now, this guy comes apart pretty easy here. Let me go ahead and just oh, pull his head off real quick. And underneath, I decided to bring to life a little bit of that circuitry that we saw that was just that dull gray that's kind of hidden now underneath all of this color. And it just makes it look like he's thinking a little bit. There's a little bit of life floating around in there. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I don't know if I'm done yet. Maybe I'm just getting started. I don't know. But there's also something very uh, soothing and relaxing about just grabbing some paint grabbing some markers and uh, coloring your droid. Now, again, this was another toy that when I picked them up and put them together, it was just a lot of fun. Again, carrying around his little cool backpack, his little head pops out. You know, you can kind of like use the remote control to get him to kind of interact with people as they follow you around the park. Uh, and then you have this, like I said, this really cool little remote here. That kind of just like brings this little guy to life. Um, I guess only if I turn them on, maybe. Oh, here we go. And uh, once you start playing with some of these little sounds, some of these noises, that's where you really start to have a lot of fun. But you can change those up with this little personality chip. Now, as you can see in there, he's got this little gray chip. I can go ahead and pull this out. And without it, he basically sounds like R2-D2. And you're going to find a lot of the sounds that you're going to hear in the movie when dealing with R2-D2. I know you're R4, trust me. Well, I'm just making an example out of... Well, everybody knows who R2-D2 is and not every... Well, not everybody knows who R4-D1 is. 
exactly. Well, I'm sorry. So anyway, you put this little personality chip in. I went with the smuggler scoundrel chip here. Gives him a little attitude here. A little sharp. A little, I'm not playing around. A little sassy. Are you kidding me? He's kind of sarcastic, and I like that. You know, he's been working all day. He is not the type of droid that's going to put up with a lot of sass. Now, you want to do something a little perkier. And put a little resistance chip. This kind of reminds me a little bit more of the BB-8. Some fun chirpy sounds. Now, you know what's interesting? I've never really been always a fan of Star Wars, but it is fun to me to think that like all the the, the droids have always been very appealing. Even before like I got into Star Wars itself, even as a kid, I did like R two D two. I think there was like really no escaping him and C three PO. Just had this really fun kind of like odd couple. Uh, relationship and uh you know it's the same even today with um well of course bb8 uh, and then of course in the last film you have dio dio was so much fun and these guys just have like so much personality and so much charm and like i said i wasn't as a kid always a fan of star wars but i don't think you can really escape the charm and the love for uh like r2d2 the ewoks well the ewoks kind of make sense because they're furry but the way they're able to make these droids lovable is just amazing. So anyway, I just slipped in the red ship, which is kind of like the resistance. And these are all the sounds that you might hear from like those very shiny black droids. Again, in that very sterile, clean environment that I mentioned of the Empire. All business. Very sharp. And this is what you might use, like, if you're sending your droid in to infiltrate, communicate. Against the uh, first class. This is the first, excuse me, first class ship. This is what you might put in, you know, send them to like infiltrate the first, uh, oh, the first, oh, first class, the first order. First class was X-Men. That's like a whole other thing. Dude, get it together. All right. So anyway, yeah, this is the first order chip. So this is what you might send them in to uh, like, you know, download their, their secret files. But anyway, this is the chip I really like, which is like I said, it's the smuggler's chip here. Gives them a little bit of sass, a little bit of Kurt there. And, uh. There we go. Now the remote's very simple. You got your forward, your back, your side to side. Kind of move the head around a little bit there with this guy. And when I was walking through the park, I found myself, like I said, wearing the backpack and just kind of clicking his head around and giving everybody like a little bit of a show and you know, letting them have like a good time just watching me carry the droid around. But then all of a sudden this guy started like making noises and chirping and doing things on his own. I really couldn't figure out why. But then I got back home or well, back to the resort, and started reading up on him, and come to find out, he's got a Bluetooth receiver inside the droid, that anytime he comes in contact with another droid, or with one of the Bluetooth, like little receivers inside the park, he's going to react to it, which I thought was absolutely amazing. Whether he's on, whether he's off, if you walk past a little Bluetooth emitter, or another droid, he's going to chirp and hang out, and to me, that just even gives him even like a little bit more life and a little bit more personality. And it's like one of those things that's really fun to just kind of, you know, pull out the remote, play around in the kitchen, drive your dogs crazy, whatever. But once you start getting him involved with other droids and other like Bluetooth receivers, that's where you find out that this droid really does have a little bit of a personality all his own. And... Um, there's also a really cool phone app. Now, I'm actually sadly using my phone to make this video, so I can't really show that right now, but my wife and I, like I said, we do plan on doing a whole Build-A-Droid video later on down the line once we move down to Florida. So look forward to that, and we'll show you how like the whole little app works, and you can use your phone to program moves and actually use them to your phone to control the droid itself, and it's just, it's just a whole, whole lot of fun. 
Um, but anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap this video up. But this is definitely one of those, like, there's so much cool merch you can get from Disney and so much cool, you know, just fun you can have there. This was definitely one of the best experiences that I've ever had at Disney, putting together my own little droid. Like I said, I don't think I kept my wife up half the night the first night I was home. Or, again, back at the resort, just playing with all my toys, running around the room, like, just geeking out like a little kid. And uh, I can't wait to go back and do it again. This will probably be one of those things where I'll have a, a collection and a, and a variety of different little astromech droids from Disney's uh, Hollywood Studio, Galaxy's Edge at Batu. Such a cool place, such a cool park, uh, so immersive. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those like, things I can like take home with me. And, and, and cherish and, and just kind of, you know, really, uh, exactly. You said it, you said it best. I couldn't say it any better. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Um, thanks for just kind of checking out some of my cool Star Wars merch. And, you know, we're going to keep, continue uh, celebrating May the 4th all weekend long. Uh, you know, guys, don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Yep comment down below and until next time guys don't forget don't spend your quarter anywhere else guys thanks a lot for hanging out see ya